Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video where today I'm going to be just doing a video of basically explaining what I think about the current situation situation with Sheffield Wednesday and uh, what I think we should do regarding the future and managerial aspects and, you know, player aspects of, of Sheffield Wednesday. So basically, although I've not vlogged them, which um, I've gone to the games, but I've just not vlogged them because I've just chosen not to. Uh, the Brentford game and the Nottingham Forest game. Um, basically, we we played them and we beat beat Forest three uh, one on Saturday. I'm currently recording this on on Wednesday because I've got to get videos up for Friday and Saturday because I'm going I'm in my caravan and I can't really call anything for that so I'm recording this on Wednesday and we'll be on the Saturday that's just gone it was on TV we've been on the Forest 3-1 and then we've just yesterday uh, we beat Brentford 2 on both those games at Hillsborough uh, first first two wins not of the season but uh, at Hillsborough and uh, yeah so I'm really kind of reviewing them and then uh, giving my opinions on what I think we should do so starting off with the Nottingham Forest game, we actually beat them three one goals coming from Gary Hooper, who had at that point got that was his second goal in as many games. Um, also goals from Stephen Fletcher and Kieran Lee. Uh, uh, Gary Hooper's goal um, was it was quite a good goal. Uh, it was kind of a you know quite a typical Gary Hooper goal really. Uh, just a you know, bit of a poacher's finish. Um, so it was quite quite a good goal. Stephen Fletcher's goal was another quite decent goal. I think Gary Hooper is just coming back from injury now, and he's really looking threatening up top uh, for them. Buzzing to see if he can stay fit this season. Not only will he be pro the best strike we have, but he could also possibly get you know fifteen to he could push for twenty goals this season. I really do think he can do. It. And then regarding Stephen Fletcher, someone that I when we first got him. I mean, I thought, okay, he's played for Sunderland, he's quite decent there, played for Marseille, he's all right there. Seems like he's always been quite a decent striker. And when we first got him, he got injured, and I thought, oh, God, is he just going to be a player that's just never going to play for us? A bit like Will Buckley or Callum McManaman or um, Lewis McGugan. Um, but I think the end of last season and the beginning of this season, he actually was actually our top goal scorer last season, getting 14 goals. But he's really come into his own. He's really starting to become a, ve a very good, very good striker. He's, he's a good, good header of the ball. Um, six foot one, six foot two. So yeah, he's quite good. He jumps quite early for the balls, which uh, catches some defenders off. So yeah, he's been a, he's been quite a decent signing so far for, uh, for Wednesday. Then Kieran Lee, this man is a machine. He's just come back from an injury. He's had a major operation on his hip, and he's actually come back and he's played. He played about eighty minutes of the game against Forest, and then he's played. He played the full ninety against Brentford. He played every single minute of the Brentford game. It's just, it's just incredible to see. I mean, he's not like he's come back. He's been awful either. He's been solid. He's almost like the Kieran Lee that we were that we like to see. In, that we've liked to see for the past three four years you know he's been so so good for us and he's he's so fit he's just he seems like quite, quite a natural born fit uh football obviously that's not when he gets injured which is uh he's, he's not we really get injured he's just had to like this operation which has caused him, caused him a few problems but yeah he was he got in the team of the week he got an assist and a goal on his in his first game back for months absolutely insane then moving on to the Brentford game. Now this was a lot, lot, a lot different of a game. We went one nil down early on. wasn't looking good. They had a lot of pace. We're not a fast team. We weren't used to. Well, we just didn't know how to defend against fast teams. Didn't know what was happening. I honestly could see that. Could see this game. When we went when we went one nil down, thinking, "Oh my god, this could be an awful ninety minutes of football." And to be honest, if it weren't for Gary Hooper's equaliser on the stroke at half time, I think it would have been. That I think we were so lucky to get that goal. That was the crucial time. Um we just Gary Hooper just rolled just chipped the goalkeeper and then maybe put a bit too much on it. The defenders went to clear it off the line, but only to as far as Hooper, who literally just have, had to tap it home in from about a foot wide. So yeah, I mean, we were very lucky in this game. We were a lot scrappy, a lot less nice brand of football that we saw against Nottingham Forest. I feel like we kind of had to because it was a midweek game. It was scruffy. The, weather, the conditions weren't great. We just had to get stuck in there, show a bit of heart, show a bit of passion. And we managed to come out with all three. 
Goals again from Gary Hooper, like I said, that's made him get 3-3 three three now, which is looking very decent for him. And also Ross Wallace, who I actually thought had a bit of a mare at the game, but if you're gonna if you're gonna show crucial goals like that, uh, Wallace, then you can play crap every week as long as you score. There's important goals that can go from getting just one point to three points. And it was it was it was really hanging on on thin. We were skating on thin ice, as the saying goes. I think. Um, Really, from when we scored in what the seventieth minute, all the way to the, there was actually ended up being a hundred, hundred and seven minutes because one of their players got a really bad injury. I hope he's okay as well. Uh, my thoughts do go out to him because he was down for about seventeen minutes, which is, which is not great. So um, yeah, we were really hanging on. They were pushing at us and pushing and pushing, and. We did, I don't know how, but we managed to hang on to the win and get a massive three points at Hillsborough. So that pushes us on to six in the table. Now we are in a playoff spot. We've gone from being 16th uh, to sixth in, what, three games, which is pretty pretty crazy. It shows how, shows how pre- can, not meaningless the early stages of the season are, but how, you know, you can really turn a seat, you can turn your table form around in just a matter of weeks. You know, it just... So it's so easy. So um, not easy, but it's it's it is easier. It is um quite easy to well, that same with dropping form. I mean, you know, you can go from being sixth down to sixteenth in three games. You know, just to click of your fingers and bam, you're in the bottom half of the table. So this early stages of the season, you know, it is big, but you know, to have bad starts to the season isn't it 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 is costly to a certain extent, but you can recover. So now, what I think we should do this season is I've been since when we lost to Huddersfield in the playoff final semi final at Hillsborough last season on penalties. I was really starting to have my doubts about Carlos, and I still do have my doubts about Carlos. And I think that I don't know how we can't win a lot more games and score a lot more goals with the attacking threats we have. I mean, you can't really say much about Sam Winnell anymore, he's out on Leonard Derby, but you know, Jordan Rhodes. Second top EFL goal, EFL goal scorer, you know, Lucas Yao on his day can score some goals, you know, Stephen Fletcher, Gary Hooper, Forest area when he's fit, you know, all these, these are five strikers or attacking players, and you know, Bannon, Wallace, I mean, they're not strikers, but they're attacking players, Reach, Boyd, you know, Butterfield now, all these play, Keenan Lee, all these players that can attack, and if we can't score three goals, in most games, you know, then I thought that was really going to be an issue. In the last two games, we have picked up form. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is Wednesday back to his best now. And I think if we can beat Cardiff on Saturday against Neil Warnock, who, God, I hate that man, but he's a good manager. You know, if we can beat them, then I think that would be a real, real good, you know, good stead for... Put us in good stead uh, to when we play uh, Sheffield United at Hillsborough. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Neil Warnock, he... He loves beating Sheffield Wednesday. He'll put a lot, a lot of heart and a lot of passion into those Cardiff players to try and beat us. And I mean, we got to win uh, at the Cardiff City Stadium. Sorry, not too sure what it's called. Uh, the Cardiff City Stadium last season. And I mean, the second in the table. I'm not going to lie. I think I'd take a draw. I honestly think I'd take a draw. If we can get, if we can get seven points in the next three games, I would be chuffed. I'd be really happy with that. Draw against Cardiff, beat United, and then we have Leeds after that. So we've got the top three teams in the league. So we've got we've got second, then third, then first in the league. I mean that might change within when we play those teams, but I mean we've got such such a tough month ahead of us, and it really need we need to show our, our like team spirit and our and our you know our togetherness to try and you know get as many points possible out of this month because. You know, it could, it could be one of the biggest months, yeah, because it's like yeah, like I said, it's early on in the season, but you know these points could if we if we drop points, it could come back to bite us towards the end of the season, and we don't want that. Especially since this is our third time around trying to get playoffs, or trying to get promotion now. I mean, if we don't get promoted this season, Carlos really should probably go. I mean, I said that he should go in the uh, summer transfer window. He's not gone, he's still here, so, you know, there's no, not real point sacking him now, give him 10 games, yeah, I think 10, 11 games, I mean, Frank Deboa went in four games, but, you know, he's in, God knows what's happening with Crystal Palace, 
that was just unfair, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'll, that's for another video. But anyway, you know, it's just... It is just... It is annoying for, for, for Sheffield Wednesday fans, you know. We've been... We were average for so many years. I mean, Milan might... Well, not to slate Milan Mandrick at all. You know, he got us out of so, so much debt. But he didn't want to invest a lot of money into Wednesday, which is fair play. So he sold it on to somebody who was willing to invest a lot of money. So, you know, I think the standards are high this season. I think a lot of people are expecting promotion. A lot, a lot of people, certainly compared to the first season. And I think we honestly should be getting promotion with the side we've got. I mean, yeah, you could say the championship's tougher than ever. Personally, I don't know. I mean, there's Wolves. I don't think Sunderland are much good. Don't think Middlesbrough are much good, and I certainly don't think Hull are much good if they're going to lose to five. If they're going to lose five 0 against Derby. So yeah, I mean, it's an unpredictable league, and anything could happen really. So guys, so that's going to end this video. If you did enjoy, if you did enjoy, then please like and subscribe if you haven't already for more future content from me. So yeah, uh, I'll see you later. Bye.